Charlie was with us today and all the way through for the trial. And I am Charlie. A jury has spoken, the mother of one victim sharing her grief. Jawan Carroll, the gunman in last year's deadly mass shooting outside a downtown Minneapolis nightclub. Guilty, guilty, and guilty. Nine counts of murder and attempted murder. One of those killed an innocent University of St. Thomas grad to be. His name is Charlie Johnson. And our Paul Bloom has followed this case for more than a year now. He is live at the courthouse with reaction tonight. And Paul, the defendant had claimed self defense that night. The jury did not buy that. Kelsey and Randy, you mentioned it off the top. Nine total counts. It took this jury, though, only four hours to render their verdict guilty. Across the board, I can tell you the Johnson family, they spoke afterwards. There was no joy in these verdicts as they fully understand that nothing will bring, will bring back their loved one. I wish I could say I was happy about it. I'm happy that that menace is off the street. Charlie Johnson's family was in the courtroom for the entire trial, seeking justice for the senseless slang of their precious son and brother. Charlie was just hours away from graduating from the University of St. Thomas when he was struck in the back by a stray round fired by Juwan Carroll. Charlie's dad shared his feelings when the clerk read the verdict, nine counts of murder and attempted murder, all guilty. I felt it all the way down to my toes, I guess, you know, because you never know what the word's going to be, and we felt like it was the right one. The now 25-year-old Carroll had argued self-defense, that he should not be held criminally responsible for the two deaths and more than half a dozen injuries when he exchanged gunfire with an armed rival on a busy sidewalk at bar close. Carroll's attorney in disbelief. He was being shot at within just a few seconds. Any lessons here about bringing guns downtown? Anything that that, that, that jury told? No, uh, just kind of the jury took only about four hours to deliberate after listening to a week's worth of testimony from Carroll, law enforcement, and those who survived the mass shooting. The Johnsons now choosing to remember how Charlie lived, not the evil that stole him from them at the age of 21. We're committed to carrying Charlie through us the rest of our life, living like he taught us to live. And that's be kind, have empathy for other people, have an adventurous spirit, and get out and explore the world with curiosity. And Juwan Cowell remains down the block at the Hennepin County Jail. He will return to the courthouse behind me on December 12th for sentencing. We're live in downtown Minneapolis. Paul Bloom, Fox News. In Wisconsin, the man accused of driving a car through a crowd of spectators at a Christmas parade in Waukesha has been found guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree <laughs> recklessly endangering safety. As Brooks was found guilty on all 76 charges, including intentional homicide charges for killing six people. He faces a mandatory life sentence for each of those intentional homicide counts. Coming up at 630, we'll have a live report from the courthouse in Waukesha. Also, new developments tonight in the large-scale cell phone theft ring recently busted in Minneapolis. Could you talk about this scheme? You were sending the iPhones back to China, Hong Kong? Brandon Sue, the alleged ringleader in the conspiracy, had no comment to our Paul Bloom leaving the courthouse today. Sue is one of a dozen suspects prosecutors charged with racketeering, accused of shipping thousands of dollars worth of stolen cell phones overseas. Authorities have gone after everyone involved in the alleged operation, including those violently stealing the devices, as well as the suspects raiding the victims' financial apps after the theft. The crimes occurring over the last year plus focused primarily on popular Minneapolis bar areas. Three more suspects charged with racketeering were arrested this week and made their first court appearances today as well. The man nominated to become the next